And let's introduce a new car to the channel. That's right. I'm gonna be seeing some work on, I think I'm gonna shut off the three. And I'm sure it's noisy as shit right now because I have the heater going, but Look at the space that I have now. I don't have a lot of the tools over here yet. And obviously this is a trash pile that needs to go to the dump. But look at all the room. I think this would probably be the equivalent of like a four or five car garage. Because I could probably, maybe, what this means is that I now have the place to actually do a wide body. Also, make more of my Duckbill spoilers that I'm gonna be selling and you people know who you are if you're tuning in to watch this. So I'm gonna get some stuff gathered together and then we're gonna talk about exactly what we're doing. Okay, so before I can actually get into starting to even attempt to fabricate a wide body, and <sighs> kerosene heater ran out of fuel, so I'm gonna have to go get some. But I can do this in cold temps, because right now what I'm trying to figure out is establish just how wide I want to go. And I'm going to mimic that by using a combination, I'm not exactly sure what that is yet, of spacers to push my existing wheel out. So let's say, for instance, well, here's one thing. First off, technically, this caliber is already wide-bodied from the factory. I mean, it, it does have that over fender here. And that's about the equivalent of maybe two inches. I don't know. So the question really is, how far from the edge of that, basically that's a little bit more than flush. So how far out do I want to come? Now from this point, I have to take into consideration, like if I'm only gonna add two inches here, I have to take into consideration building it all the way back to the car. Like I've already got that little bit of bump there. So in doing the math, <clears throat> and I'm not about to explain the, to switch from millimeters to inches and whatnot, but basically I've come up with two choices. I could go to a 20 by 10 inch wide wheel with a negative 25 offset. And that would put me from the edge, from right where my existing wheel is sitting, which is just a little bit of poke, is gonna add another 2.56 inches, I think was the math from millimeters, two inches, or I could go with a 20 by 12 with a negative 44 offset, which is stupid amount. Like, forget about just getting to zero. I'm a negative 44 on a 20 by 12 would put me 4.3 inches past where this tire sets right now. And that also, uh, the wheel that I was looking at has doesn't have so much like a bunch of dollar bill deep dish lip. It has massive amount of concave. I mean, probably a good three or four inches of concave. But you have to take into consideration when you're standing or looking at it from every single angle. Like if that were sticking out another four inches, somehow I just added a highlight. Four inches from here would be about here or whatever. Like, is that too much? Is that gonna be too obnoxious? I, I don't know if that's the right word. I mean, that, that would be a lot to come back in. And then to add the same amount 
up front here. There's a lot of unanswered questions still because this is uncharted territory. I don't have anybody to ask, you know, to really come up with any answer. This is all trial by fire, figure it out on your own. So I already have 25 millimeter spacer with that setup. My goal here is to not run any spacers. So if I were to deduct that spacer from a negative 44 offset and I'm only gonna be coming out 3.34 inches, which when I did the math, it basically converts out to 5 sixteenths of an inch. So I have these spacers, these things here. I was thinking about putting one of these on the back. Now, obviously, don't do this and drive with it. I'm literally only doing this for the purposes of putting my tire where the finished look is going to be when I actually have the right rim or wheel that will do it on its own. Obviously, I don't wanna go out and buy, I mean, I'm gonna protect these a little bit and I'm going to end up selling these wheels to help buy the new set. I've actually been talking with the company because uh, this is something that's never been done before, but that's a whole other story anyway. So, first thing I'm gonna do, jack up the car, pull off the wheel, and start adding some spacers, adapters, to come up with what I think might look the best. And when we get to that point, I'll show you and uh, definitely comment below what you think. The good news about this space is I have the ability to stand back and really check it out and see how it looks. That's something I did not have last year in my little tent. So I'm gonna slap some of these on. I've come up with what I'm definitely going to be going with on a wheel as far as width and offset. No more guessing. Uh, the four inches is a little bit too much. Okay. Took a little bit of finagling and thinking outside the box to get my existing setup exactly where the edge of the tire is gonna be with the new wheel design that I have in mind with this width and specific offset. And what that equals out to is meat. So the inside of the tire, the inner wall, is still gonna be, because of the huge negative offset, I'm actually gonna be almost three quarters of an inch further away from any of my suspension. So that's good. And if I add on, I did have it started and I checked the turning radius and whatnot. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues as far as that goes. I definitely know that I am gonna have to get in here, probably right up to about there, so that when the suspension flexes, I'm not bouncing off of my tires. So at a certain point, once I fabricate these and it is built, like uh, this isn't gonna be riveted on. I've seen some body kits that have that with that weather stripping seal around. These are going to be molded. So this is a permanent fixture on the car. And I had, this is a, a more of a realistic approach. This is not going to be, you know, subtle. It's, if you park it next to another caliber, it's gonna clearly be noticeable. Not that I ever am parked next to another caliber. So this is, this is where Dodge should have brought it to. Because right now, you know, Dodge, the caliber SRT technically came with a wide body, whatever, it's an over fender. This is different than a regular caliber model. But 
They obviously did a conservative version, you know, because they're having to market to the masses. However, what I'm going to do with this Everybody with this car is gonna want, well not everybody, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I've had a lot of feedback already and people are excited to see this. I know everybody's thought about it. You know, wide body a wide body, that seems dumb. No, I don't call it wide bodying a wide body. I call it doing it the way it should have been done from the beginning. So when that is actually built out, just the girth and, you know, well, I'm making a woman's figure. Those are the best looking cars. Like, what I really want is for, obviously this is never gonna be a muscle car, but I want it to have that stance and straight flexing look. I know right now that probably looks silly to you because you're not having the visual of anything else there I can already see it I can throw up something pretty quick to maybe give more of an idea of where we're going definitely not the shape I'm gonna use but it will help you get more of a visual as to how different it's gonna be so let's do that a couple pieces of tape in two minutes and there is a visual for you now do not take that straight line as the finished product. It's definitely not going to, to look anything like that. All that is for is to give you kind of a, a better look. Maybe you can imagine more with that there than just the tire sticking out of just how gnarly this is going to look obviously there's going to be the side skirts gonna have to come out to the furthest point at the rear and up here and that is a huge part of of tying it in you know so right now this is nothing more than helping me gauge just how wide and then when that is on the other side also like i can already see in my head the the shape and design that i'm going to fabricate and it's not quite it's not really like that tape is so some of you guys might not be on board yet and that's the beautiful part of why you should take a second and subscribe because this will be a build that is either going to be amazing when it's done or I'm going to completely destroy a show winning car. There's a little peek from the back. Now when that side skirt is tying the front and rear fenders in together, it's, it's going to have so much more of a complete look. I can just see and also finishing up the three piece of the duck bill to come around and kind of come down around by the way if this is the first time you tuned into the channel i made that duck bill spoiler i will slap a link in the description or throw it up at the end you can check that out and i literally and i made that last year in a tent garage so i am set up this year um, not only am I doing this, I'm also going to start making some of the duckbill spoilers I've made for sale. I have my first five people. You know who you are. I also, I've never really gotten a good shot of the carbon fiber roof rails. That's real carbon fiber, by the way. And the mirrors. So. Also, the fog light bezels. I cut some of the lights off because I'm about to be done in here for the night. But the um, fog light bezels and the other pieces of the mirror, I might slap them on now, but they're done. And um, tons of things coming. 
I am going to be getting one fairly soon. I'm not sure if it'll happen before Christmas, probably not. Right after Christmas though, this is in full blown mode, but I am 100% confident in my math as far as that is the finished point of where it's gonna end up. So, what's next? Time to start actually pulling this tape off, protecting the side of the car, and get to forming this up with a, a, a permanent mold, so to speak, that I can actually do the fiberglass for. And I've kind of looked at this to see if I could mirror or use it for both sides. That's, I don't think I'm gonna have it that plain. So I want the lines of my pieces to match and incorporate with the lines of the car. But I'm excited. I've been wanting to do this since 20 minutes after I had the car in my possession. So for it to be happening now means that I'm running out of stuff to do. But um, it's gonna be fun either way. I won't quit or give up until it's done. If this is the first time you tuned in, click that subscribe button because it is going to be an interesting build. Until next time, you guys, and the next time we are actually going to be starting to form these fenders, keep it custom.